Come here together this evening to celebrate the marriage and reflect on the joy of Blake and Ross, who long after they believed it was possible, have had the great good fortune of falling in love with one another. A wedding is a celebration of the miracle of love, and that's what we're here to do, to celebrate that miracles do occur, that at any moment the unexpected can happen, and that after almost giving up hope, most inexplicably and wonderfully, the paths of our entire lives can change. Marriage is a meditation on our histories as well as on our futures, on our losses and failures as well as our hopes and possibilities. And so, as Blake and Ross wed, it is worthwhile to contemplate that they could not and would not be standing before us now if they had not experienced the disappointments as well as the triumphs of a long, eventful journey to this point in their lives. Two of Lake and Ross's friends would like now to celebrate this happy occasion with some well-chosen words. <clears throat> I'm reading a poem by E.E. E. Cummings called I Carry Your Heart. He's the one who writes with the little letters. <laughs> I carry your heart with me. I carry it in my heart, and I'm never without it. Anywhere I go, you go, my dear. And whatever is done by only me is your doing, my darling. I fear no fate for you or my fate, my sweet. I want no world for beautiful you are my world, my true. It's you or whatever a moon has always meant. Whatever a son will always sing is you. Here is the deepest secret nobody knows. Here is the root of the root and the bud of the bud and the sky of the sky of a tree called life which grows higher than soul can hope or mind can hide. And this is the wonder that's keeping the stars apart. I carry your heart. I carry it in my heart. Blake has asked me to read from A Gift from the Sea by Anne Morrow Lindbergh. A good relationship has a pattern like a dance and is built on some of the same rules. The partners do not need to hold on tightly because they move confidently in the same pattern, intricate but swift and free, like a country dance of Mozart's. To touch heavily would be to arrest the pattern and freeze the movement, to check the endlessly changing beauty of its unfolding. There is no place here for the possessive clutch, the clinging arm, the heavy hand, only the barest touch in passing. Now arm in arm, now face to face, now back to back, it does not matter which, because they know they are partners, moving to the same rhythm and creating a pattern together and being visibly nourished by it. The joy of such a pattern is not only 
the joy of creation, but it's the joy of participation, and it is the joy of living in the moment. The lightness of touch and living in the moment are intertwined. That's good advice. To live in the moment. To take the time to cherish all the gifts that God has given us. Tonight, Ross and Blake do not need to be reminded to give thanks for what they have been given. They know how very lucky they are. They know that the union of husband and wife and heart, body and mind is intended not only for their mutual joy, but for the help and comfort given one another in prosperity and in adversity. They know that marriage is not to be entered into lightly, but with reverence, patience, and respect. Into this holy estate, Ross and Blake now come to be joined. If anyone knows just cause why they may not lawfully be joined together, let him speak now or forever hold his peace. Perfect as your love seems to you today, it must be nurtured, lived out to the fullest in the simple ceremonies of shared daily life, in the quality of emotional exchange and spiritual communion toward which the whole of your life has been leading. Let us celebrate this in song. family of Ross and Blake bear witness now as they promise to guard and cherish their love for one another so that it always shines as brightly as it does at this moment. Blake and Ross, it's time to say the vows you have been nurturing in your heart. I won't ask if you're ready, but I suspect you've been preparing for this for a long, long time. Christina Blake Thorpe, will you have this man to be your husband? To live together in the covenant of marriage? Will you love him, comfort him, honor and keep him in sickness and in health, and forsaking all others, be faithful to him as long as you both shall live? I will. And Ross James Marler, will you have this woman to be your wife? To live together in the covenant of marriage? Will you love her, comfort her, honor and keep her in sickness and in health, and forsaking all others, be faithful to her as long as you both shall live. I will. Marriage is always a gift, but in this case, the more precious, because you get another chance, the opportunity to try and get it right. My love, I've waited so long for you that I had begun to believe that there was no such thing as real love. And that I would spend my life out in, in vain searching for that perfect someone for me. After many missteps and sorrows. After I had given up hope. You came to me like a miracle. A single elegant star in the darkest of night. Loving you has forever changed me. You are my friend, my teacher, my accomplice, and my lover. With you I feel joy. I feel whole. 
And I feel that anything is possible. They say that no one knows what the future holds. But I do know this. I will cherish you, respect you, and love you. And give thanks for you until the day I die. My beloved Black, it's difficult to remember my life before you came into it. I was only half alive, measured, controlled, incomplete, without you to unlock the doors that I'd closed so long ago. And you came into my life like a summer storm. I enjoyed the chaos of your happy thunder and the warm rain of your embrace. I threw caution to the wind, and I expected to be punished for it. But instead, I was rewarded with the privilege of loving you for a lifetime. And that I will do. My dear, I will love you and honor you in good times and in bad. Enjoy you, console you, astound you when I can. I will be thankful for you always and cherish you dearly until God brings to an end our earthly days. Bless these rings as a sign of the vows by which this man and this woman have bound themselves to each other through our Lord. With this ring, I thee wed. With my body, I thee worship. And with all my earthly goods, I thee endow. With this ring, I thee wed. With my body, I thee worship. And all my worldly goods, I thee endow. I charge all here present to be not only witnesses to these vows, but supporters of this marriage. These two will face difficult times. Every marriage does. When they come to you for help, think only of the covenants they have made today and how you can help them keep it. And now, since you have signified your love by the exchange of vows and the exchange of rings, I pronounce you husband and wife. These were two. Now they are one. Ross, you may kiss the bride. something down, slip into my apartment, leave it on my pillow, and I'll be your slave for life. You'll be my slave? Mm-hmm. 
but only in the oh, most yeah. liberated, yeah, yeah, um, feminine uh -huh, sort right. of uh, manner. <laughs> Why, you all soft to you. I've heard of people crying at weddings, but you really break the record. You know, I could really use a drink about now. Would you be able to get me one? <laughs> well, <laughs> what did you think here of your old friend in the mentor? I thought he held up pretty well. Yeah, well, he was very eloquent, very eloquent. But you know what? One time I saw him do a summation one time. He came very close. But I think he taught himself today. Oh, yeah. praise from the legal front. That's right. You want to know something really funny? What? This is the marriage that almost wasn't. What do you mean? I mean, you know, Ross was so busy with Bridget's case and all, he forgot to fill out the application for the marriage license. Oh, <laughs> if no. I hadn't reminded him, we might not even be standing here today. Oh, honey, you <laughs> saved the day. I don't think I can take much more happiness. I know, first the decision with Peter and now these two wonderful people starting off their lives again together. I just... I don't know if I can take much more of this, you know? Well, you better get used to it. Because your life's changing, kid. From now on, it's happiness all the way. I promise you that. <laughs> yeah, it's real. You know, I have the receipts in the car if you want to see them. Oh, Ross, look at all these people. They look so happy. We make them happy. As happy as we are. Oh, no. Not even close. Oh, Mary. Piece, isn't it, huh? I'm gonna congratulate the bride and the groom. Frankie! Frankie! Frank, Frank, wait! Frank? When is, where did he go off to? What? Oh, no. Ross looks kind of happy right now. You know, to, right now might be the perfect time to ask him for that raise if you've been needed. Oh, sure. that's a good idea, Mr. Reed. Why didn't I think of that? Yeah, well, you're not a craving opportunity. That's why you should be ashamed of yourself for thinking about money. Solemn event like this. <laughs> I know, I know. But you can't resist me, can you? You can't, can you? Please, well, tell me you can't resist me. Yeah, I can't. No. <laughs> uh, shouldn't we have a toast or something? Oh. Yes, I think Ed is going to say a few words. Uh -huh. Ah. Okay. All right. Want uh, yes, please. Right. Come on. Oh. Get out of here. Honey. Okay. You turned around. I, I think I'm together. Uh, could I have your attention, please? Hello? Mm -hmm. Does everyone have a, a glass, a drink, all that stuff? Yeah, okay, um, I guess you know that it's sort of uh, semi-traditional for the best man to... Well, for a toast, some of the cynics there think that I had my chance to limelight earlier, but those weren't my words I was reading, and this time I get to speak for myself. Uh, though I'm not really speaking for myself, uh, I know all of us would like to say to Ross and Blake that how much joy they're giving us by allowing us to share this night with you. I mean, it gives us all hope, you know. It, it dares us to dream. It reminds us how... Uh, how wonderfully unpredictable life can be, you know, because <clears throat> well, see, I figure you, sort of, you, you go through life and you take the good with the bad, right? And, and uh, occasionally, if you're foolish, you stop and you try and tote up your blessings. And usually you figure out, well, I have pretty much reached the limit. I mean, in the grand scheme of things, right, there's only so much really good, wonderful stuff out there, you know, and I've had my share, right? So it's someone else's chance. I don't want to be greedy. It wouldn't be fair. And then it can be like uh, a sonic boom and your life can just crack open like... Walnuts. <laughs> your life can crack open like a walnut and suddenly it's Christmas 
your birthday, Easter, all wrapped up into one. You didn't deserve it. It's like the answer to a prayer you offered up in your sleep. Anyway, some of you may be confused, but I don't think Ross and Blake are confused. I think you know what I'm talking about, and I hope you know that all we're saying is how much we love you. And just please, please be happy, you two wonderful people. As happy as you are now, be that way day after day, week after week, year after year. More than that, no one can wish you. That must have been why Frank hurried off. He went back to the water and made his own cake. I can't believe it. I mean, why wouldn't he tell me that he did this? Because Frank is a cooper, and we all have enough pride to destroy our entire lives. Besides, he saw that cake that Al Michael brought from the region. See, I mean, what was he supposed to do, really? Can't be greedy. You got to be fair. So, then you get it all in control, you put it in perspective, and then it can be like a, um... A sonic boom and your life can just crack open like a walnut <laughs> your life can crack open like a walnut and then it's christmas it's new year's it's your birthday all wrapped up into one you don't deserve it you didn't ask for it it's like the answer to a prayer that was offered up in your sleep Anyway, I know you guys may be confused. I, I think that Ross and Blake know what I'm talking about. I hope they know how much we love them. Just please, please be happy, you two wonderful people. As happy as you are now, be that way day after day, week after week, year after year. No one can wish you more than that. What either of us are. Right, right. No, it's even better. How do you have to know to get some champagne around? You have to know me. Champagne, everybody. Oh, you have to. Well, I'm not as good as us, but still some kiss. Congratulations, Ross. I'm going to let you be the first one to dance with me. I invited Alan Michael to the reception. You just got here, right? Just. As, as a matter of fact, I said that the bride has never, never looked more beautiful or, or happier. I, this one's definitely made in, made in heaven, Ross. Would you like this person removed? Oh, no. It's a time for new beginnings. Huh? So stay. Enjoy yourself. Have a glass of champagne. Great, thanks. Keep your hands off my marriage. Ross and Blake! They didn't skip out. Well, did they? Come on! Can't drag them in! Here. We got tradition to uphold. Mrs. Marler for a long, long time. The rest of my life. Forgive me, but may I? You happy? You look happy. I think for the first time in my life, I am truly happy. Honey, that's all I ever wanted to hear. And you're being here? You are just icing on the cake. You know that? You and Mom being here together. This is just a perfect day. 
You're the perfect father of the bride. And I know it's not easy for you. I know you have doubts about my husband, my wonderful husband. I have no doubts that you have never looked lovelier. I don't hold a candle to mom, though. That's drop dead gorgeous. That's just what she is. So tell me, when's the next wedding in the family gonna be? <laughs> You're too much. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to hazard a wild guess. Now, this is strictly off the top of my head, but I would say you are a happy man. <laughs> yeah, there are a couple of tests for happiness. Uh, grinning like an idiot, walking on air, and I think I qualify. Imminently. What do you think about what Blake said? In... <clears throat> what, I do? No, no, that now that we're married, all our troubles are behind us. Yes, I say they are. And the same for me, too. Proud you, Blake, standing up to your father, marrying the man you love. I know how Roger feels about Ross. I'm sure he didn't make it easy. As long as I'm Mrs. Ross Marler, nothing else matters. I just remember those vows you made tonight. Stand by your husband. Side with him, it's important. You mean against my father, is that what you're saying? <laughs> I thought things were better with you two. I thought... I thought your being here meant that you were patching things up. Well, your mother called and said you were getting married. I came here because of you, not my son. <laughs> Nearly everybody. Excuse me. Sorry. Your school at Springfield and your father all here to honor your daughter. My daughter? I think you had a little something to do with it. She's so happy that Adam came. That was all you. Thank you well, it's great to see the Thorpes is speaking again. Ready? Okay. You said go. Okay. One last oh, time. We got love this one. <laughs> okay, dear. Not surprised. <laughs> ambrosia, ambrosia. The cake's not too bad either. <laughs> Cooper, cater my life. Oh. <laughs> Hi, I'm Ross. I'll be your waiter tonight. <laughs> Eat up, right? <laughs> Mrs. Marler would like a copy of this, wouldn't she, dear? Losing one husband is a little careless, don't you think? I didn't oh, lose, lose him, him, Alex. You drove him away. Really, dear? And how in the world did I do With that? your little plan to take back the house and all the other assets you gave him. Well, Nick didn't mention anything about me. When, I, when told I told him what your plan was, he blamed me. Just like you hoped he would. Oh, I see. You knew. You told him just so he'd be angry with me when that didn't happen. <gasps> you just seems backfire right, more Alex, than once, don't they? Think right, you right, 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 I have told my husband, Alex. You have a hidden agenda a mile long that Nick is consistently blind to. Oh, right, I right, have right. to watch out for you, and I see right Alexandra. through you. Well, you know Zary didn't work this time because I canceled that Come order. Come on, Nothing happened, my dear. You made a great deal of mischief for no reason at all. It all blew up right in your face. May I see Nick's nose, please? Let go, Let go, Alexandra! Wait! Weekdays at 4.30 and 7 on Channel 10. I can't believe you did this, Alex. Oh, Cindy, you have the grace of a blind, moronic cow. Are you hurt? No, I'm perfectly fine. Come on, Lancho. Come on, come on, come on. A little wet. Here, here. Oh, my God. Well, just, I'll be all right. I'll be all right. Come on. There, there. Excuse me, Mrs. What is it? I never mind. I don't think it's a very good at time. Oh, really? Use a little bit of that corporate executive experience. Does it look like a good time? No, great. Oh, freezing. Look, what you got here? It's okay, it's doing you. In your ear. Does this go in your ear? The one that's Bridget? Yeah. Adam Thorpe would like to meet yeah. his great grandson. Bridget, oh. this is Adam. Hi. Hello, Bridget. How are you? Hi, how are you? This is Peter. Do you want to go to him? Give him a hug? Oh, 
night. Can you give me a kiss? Okay, ready. Uh, Chrissy, I'm going to take a little picture here. Um, could you stand right here? Peter, can you stand Hi, right honey. here? With Chrissy? Dad, that's good. Okay, Holly, can you get us all in here? I think um, so. Wait a minute, wait a minute, hold it. Don't, 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 don't shoot it yet. Okay, all you have to do is just press the button. Okay. That's been what I intend to do. No, no. What I mean is that the film will advance automatically. I can help. Okay. Come on, Dad. Come on, Dad. While well, well, Peter is, you know, not fussing. Come on. Get into the picture. What? When we want something, we just yell for it. Roger, I just take the photograph. Okay. okay. Let's see that four right. generational smile. Okay. Smile. Oh, uh, no, 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 no. The, the bride should be in the middle. Uh, it's her day. Okay. Come on. Say cheese. Right. Very nice. Cheese. Say it again. All right. Cheese. Oh, one more. Oh. Good luck. Let's get off. There, we got it. Okay. <laughs> Another one. One more. Great. Good. Oh, great. Now, I got to get him in there and get him changed. Okay. okay. Will you help me? You want to come? I'd love to. Yes, may I carry? No? no? Okay. Oh. Come on, Grandpa. Oh, look Whoa. at this. Uh, we've got grandfather and Great-grandson? Right. Four generations of them. Calls for a glass of champagne. You see what he did when I put my hand on his shoulder? I mean, that guy is so cold to me. It's just unbelievable. Okay. Hey, look, here's our lovely maid of honor. Hi. Hi. Oh, let me take your picture. Oh, oh no, 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 don't waste the film. Oh, come on, you come gotta on, really the go film. You're a oh, lovely girl, and I want a picture taken. Good. Okay, cheese. Hey, Okay, another one. Okay. You know, I'm Cheese. Uh, talking to Holly earlier. You weren't. Take one more. I was telling her that I'm grossly overpaid at the journal. Yeah. Holly, are you grossly overpaying this young lady? No, I'm serious, really. <laughs> yeah, I can see you. Are. I wouldn't mind if I knew what I was being paid for or why you felt that you needed to get me the job. Do you mind telling me why? You busted me, okay? I, I was just trying to help. I, I find it very hard to stop being a father to you, you know, to let go of wanting to protect you and do what's best for you and all that, but I didn't mean any harm. Well, you have a real daughter in your life right now, and you know I don't like special treatment. I know. Which is I, why you said you stay in the background. I didn't ask anything in return. No, that's not the point. What is the point? Do you, you really think that it's appropriate for you to walk away from this opportunity just because I arranged it? Does that make any sense to you? No. I didn't say anything about quitting. I just think that my salary should be cut to what it should be. Yes, but okay, no offense, Holly. That's not a living wage. How are you going to live? Look, people do it all the time. Okay. I'll be fine. Look, Stop I'm... arguing. <laughs> all right, all right. I'll stop. Thank you. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, as Dr. Ed Bauer told me many times, the removal of a garter belt is a very delicate operation. Like to try the <laughs> <laughs> An embarrassment of riches. Talk amongst <laughs> yourselves. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not the first that I was forced to approve of. Sorry. I'm sorry. I promised. Okay. All right. I take it back. I take it all back. Don't look at me like that. <laughs> Apologize. Why? Just sensational. Look at this. But you know what? The zip zipper stuff. Get, 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 no, get I'm me. sorry that I ruined your reception. Oh, how? By fighting with Alex. I didn't mean to ruin your night. <laughs> ruin it? When he's got Alex sit is sitting there watching Alex with the fishes. That was fabulous theater. I loved it. Besides, usually it's me the one who's getting into trouble and usually ends up getting wet. So better you than me. Good. 
<laughs> Michelle. Okay, ho mom, get oh, 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 over here. Okay, get ready. No, 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 we're gonna make a wish. Maybe. I hope it's a good one. I think it's gonna be a good night. Ah! Good night, Julie. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Oh, sorry. Hi. All right, Mrs. Marler, the silver bird is waiting. What? We have a plane to catch. Where are you going? A, a country inn about an hour away from here. Is this a problem? Yeah. Say your fun. Surprise! All right. I love you. Thank you. Bye. Oh, wait. Fred and Ginger, thanks for the memories. She really believes in you, Roger. You're a lucky man for this last chance of life. Don't let her down. I think what you really mean to say is don't let her down the way I let you down, huh? She thinks you've changed. But it's easy to be nice when it's to your advantage to do so. I just can't believe that you've, the, you've run out of temptations in the world at this time. Isn't it? You're wrong. I have changed. I've got everything I want now. No, you haven't. It was never enough for you. 